Hi guys, this is Mr. Ho here. In this video, we are going to show you the candle experiment. How do we carry out the uh, experiment and what question are we trying to answer? So let's get started. Now, first of all, all of you should, be, should have used a candle before. And I have three questions regarding this candle flame. My first question is, what is burning in the candle? So there are three options for you to consider. Would that be the solid wax? Would that be the liquid wax? Would that be get, uh, wax vapor? So solid liquid gas. So which uh, wax are we burning? Or maybe something else. Would that be something else that is burning in a burning candle? This is the first question we want to ask. The second question is, you see um, the flame here. You see the flame here. I want to ask is, is it hotter at the, at the inside of the flame or hotter on the outside of the flame? So basically it is hotter here or hotter here. A, B, which part is hotter? So which part? inside or outside of the candle flame is hotter? This is my question. Okay, Is it A or B? All right. Now the third question is, when you light up a candle, you look at the flame, very often you see more than just yellow or orange color. Very often you see more than one color, especially uh, somewhere right above the wick. Now the wick is uh, the cotton thread uh, where you will light it up, right? This is what we call the wick. And very often you see the area above the wick is usually not orange, not yellow. But instead, it's kind of colorless. Or in this case, we call it the dark zone, the dark zone or dark area. Very often, we look at the flame, there are more than just yellow, but instead, there will be two or even more zone, okay? Now, later on, we are going to see the, the candle flame, the real thing, and you should be able to find all these three zones, okay? So, what we want to ask is, um, why there are two zones in the flame, in the candle flame, okay? candle flame. Why there are two zones? So basically the yellow zone and the dark zone. Why there are two zones? We want to find them out. Okay? Now, in order to answer these three questions, we have come up with four, four experiments. Each of these experiments, we have a different purpose. First of all, we will carry out what we are uh, instructed to. We write down the observation, and then we also want to determine the interpretation. Now, interpretation means what the observation tells you, okay? What the observation tells you, okay? So, this is very important because this is basically why we have to do this experiment. We want to find out answer. We want to find out clues in order to answer these three questions, okay? So, um, now let's get started. I will now perform the four experiments. Um, just briefly talk about it. First of all, for the first one, activity one, what we are trying to do is to put small amount of charcoal powder, some black powder, onto the top of the candle. Now, if you have used a candle before, at the top of the candle, there should be a small puddle of colorless liquid. A small puddle of colorless liquid. And that would be liquid wax. What we are trying to do now is to add some charcoal powder onto that puddle of liquid wax to see if the charcoal powder moves, okay? And if it moves, how does it move, okay? This is what we want to find out in the first activity. Now, in the second activity, which is based on this diagram, what we are trying to do is we lower our cardboard down to the tip of the flame. And then less than half a second, we lift it out, okay? So we put down the cardboard, and then almost immediately, we take it out. And we want to see the pattern, the burnt area of the cardboard to see how it looks like, okay? That will be the second activity. 
okay? And we are trying to draw out the burnt area, the pattern that we uh, obtain after we lower the cardboard to the flame, all right? Now, for activity three, what we are trying to do is we use a glass tubing. We, we use a glass tubing to try to get some gas or get something out of the two zones, the dark zone and the yellow zone. So we put the uh, glass tubing first into the dark zone to see what kind of gas or what kind of smoke we can get, all right? And after that, we will put the glass tubing into the yellow zone. What we are trying to do is to find out what we can get, what color of smoke we can obtain from the yellow zone, all right? That's, that's going to be the third activity. And the last one is uh, very magical. What we are trying to do is we first light up a candle and then we also prepare ourselves a burning spin. We don't use a match, we use a burning spin. So we try to blow out the flame and immediately place the burning spin close to the wick. Now I repeat, we will first blow out the flame and then we put the flame close to the wick but we never touch the wick all right what we are trying to find out is if it is possible to relight the candle without the flame actually touching the wick all right see if this is possible relight the candle without the flame touching the wick okay now so that is going to be the four activities and now I will move the camera to the setup where I will show you the demonstration, all right? All right, the first thing we're gonna do is, of course, to wear safety goggles because we are lighting up a flame. So first of all, we are trying to light up the candle. Okay, and we try to observe. Um, what I can see is there are two zones. One is the yellow zone, another one is the dark zone. And there is a small amount of blue color actually at the bottom of the flame, okay? Now, the first task is to use some charcoal powder, okay? So here, I got some charcoal powder, and then I will use a spatula to take small amount of it. So just very small amount of it, no need to get too much. And then I will gently shuffle, shuffle small amount of powder onto the puddle. Okay, um, not sure if you can see it clearly, but in fact, the charcoal powder is moving towards the wick, towards the center, and then it travels up along the wick. Okay, in the next experiment, we are trying to use a cardboard, and what we're trying to do is to make it horizontal, and then when we lower it down to the flame, we take it up and to see what pattern we can achieve. Okay, so um, this is the pattern that I, 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 I uh, obtained. So can you look at this pattern? And did you see that it looks like there is a darker ring on the outside? A darker ring on the outside. Can you see that it is darker on the outside, but it is paler on the inside, all right? I'll try to do it once more. Okay. Again, you see there is a, a ring, a darker ring on the outside, but a, a paler or lighter uh, area on the inside, all right? So what does it tell you about the temperature of the inside of the flame and the outside of the flame? Try to think about it, okay? Okay, now for the third experiment, we are going to use a glass tubing, a glass tubing. So a glass tubing has both openings even though it is already darkened. But in fact, these two are uh, uh, open, so it is uh, hollow. 
Now what we're trying to do first is to put this one, 45 degrees, put it into the dark zone to see what kind of gas I can take from the dark zone. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it from the camera, but from, from my point of view, I see some white smoke collected inside the glass tubing. Can you see that? Some white smoke collected in the glass tubing. Okay, so white smoke is obtained from the dark zone. Now, what we're trying to do is to do the same thing, but this time we put it into the yellow zone. Okay, so can you see that there is some black smoke coming out from the yellow zone? Some black smoke coming out from the yellow zone. Now, what does it tell us about the things or the gas inside the two zone? Let's think about it. Now, for the last part of the experiment, we try to relight the candle but without the flame touching the wick. So first of all, I'm going to light up a wooden spleen. It's going to be the burning spleen. Okay? And then I'll quickly blow it off and try to put it next to the wick, but not touching it, not touching it. Okay? So see if it works. Okay, can you see that? The candle has been light without the flame touching the wick. Let's look at it one more time. Okay, so if you notice that when I place the burning spin next to the candle, the flame kind of transfer to the wick and then we light it. And looks like during this process, I kind of burn something that is lingering in the air. Okay, so you may think about what it is. So that's it for the demonstration. Now let's move back to the lab report. Okay, so let's quickly discuss the experiment. Now for activity one, think about what we just what, what we have done. Now when we place the charcoal powder onto the puddle of liquid wax, we, we notice that the black powder move towards the wake, right? So this is what you're going to put down. So the black powder, don't write charcoal powder. It moves towards the wake, right? Now, and what is the interpretation? Now, what can we tell? So if the black powder is moving towards the wake, that means something is also moving towards the wake. Think about what the black powder is floating on. So what is the liquid that is below the charcoal powder? All right. Think about what is carrying the charcoal powder towards the wick. So we say that that thing with two words, move towards the wick. So you guys need to figure out what it is. Okay. That is the thing that carries the black powder to was the wick. What would that be? All right. Now, for activity two. So these are the two patterns that we, we obtained. And we are trying to draw it out, but we are not going to sketch it. What we have to do is to just to show them so to the people that there are two areas and the outside is darker and the inside is lighter, all right? That would be enough. Okay, so for the observation, very simple, okay? We say that the burnt area is what on the outside and what? Uh, on the inside, right? 
So you guys figure it out what are the two words, okay? Kind of written it down here. Now, so what are those color tell us about the temperature of the flame outside and inside? So we will say that the candle flame is what on the outside and what on the inside, okay? Again, think about the two words that fit this sentence, okay? Think about it, no. It should be matching each other, okay? And we're talking about the temperature. So these two adjectives is describing the temperature of the flame. So think about what it is, okay? Think about what it is, okay? Now, activity three. What is present in yellow zone and dark zone? So let's start with the yellow zone, yellow zone. So do you remember what do we have from the yellow zone? We see that the glass tubing will be filled with a black smoke, right? So we say that um, black smoke is obtained, okay? So what is the interpretation? Now this is the part that is a little bit more difficult. Now you have to know that what is the black smoke. In fact, the black smoke is the carbon suit. Okay, so the black smoke is actually some carbon suit. Okay, so this carbon suit is the reason why it is black. Now, if there is, if there are some carbon suit form in the yellow zone, that means I want to ask: Is the burning occur or not? Is there any burning occurs? In the yellow zone okay so I think you can answer the question we can say burning uh, occurs at the yellow zone okay so that black smoke tell us that the, the, the yellow zone in the at the yellow zone burning actually take place right now for the observation that is in the dark zone so this time, what smoke is obtained? I think you should be able to write down, okay? And if that is the white smoke, then you will ask that the same question. What is that white, uh, just measure that. What is that smoke? So that smoke is actually, anyone knows that? That smoke is actually wax vapor, wax vapor, okay? We found the wax vapor in the dark zone, okay? And the wax vapor is responsible for this smoke okay now think about it wax vapor if we find if, if we can still find the wax vapor at the dark zone does it mean that does it mean that burning has already occurred or not yet occurred so you think about it so do you think that there is burning occur you answer this question okay and the last part so can we be lighter can we relight the candle? So of course we can relight the candle. So we say that the candle relights, relights without the flame touching the wick. The candle relights without the flame touching the wick. All right. But what is the interpretation? What is the interpretation? Now, like I said, during the demonstration, we noticed that there, there are some white smoke lingering, lingering around the flame once it is being uh, blown out. So the white smoke, kind of familiar, right? Kind of familiar. So basically, the flame burns the lingering white smoke. And once the white smoke, which is the wax vapor, burns, the flame will goes back to the wick and makes the candle with lights. That's the idea. So we say that the flame, we use the word ignites. Ignites means start burning, okay? Ignites the ling lingering. 
wax vapor. Okay? Ignites the lingering wax vapor. So the, when the lingering wax vapor is burned, um, the flame will go back to the wick and therefore we light the candle. Okay? Now, so the last part is a conclusion that should be very easy. So during burning, the solid wax is melt to form what wax? Now the, the, the tips will be melt here. So when a solid melts, it becomes what? Think about it. Now, the, which is absorbed, absorbed, and moves what to the top of the wick? Moves what to the top of the wick? Should be easy, okay? Where it is vaporized, vaporized, to become to, okay, what? Vaporized, so you should be able to tell the answer, okay? Becomes what, okay? You think about it. Which is white in color, white in color, so white smoke, white smoke. Now the white smoke is found in the walk zone. Do you remember in the third activity, the third experiment, the white smoke, sorry, white smoke is found in the, okay, you should be able to answer, and it is not, burns yet okay no burning occurs yet so when it expands because it's hot right it's hot it expands when it expands and find enough oxygen in the air it starts to burn and form the carbon soot the carbon soot is responsible for the black smoke right therefore the black smoke is found in the so you should be able to tell the brightest part of the flame okay so on burning it gives out heat and this is the hottest part of the flame okay that's why the outside of the flame should be hotter than the inside, okay? Because it starts burning at the outside where it comes across sufficient oxygen to burn completely, okay? Not, not really completely, but it burns, okay? Significantly, all right? So um, that concludes the candle experiment. So please, guys, um, try to finish the rest of the report and I uh, hope you guys have learned something from this experiment and um, uh, happy Mid-Autumn Festival. So, see you guys later.